The primary way we develop this intense um, concentration gradient is by this system called countercurrent multiplication. And this system it exists because of the arrangement of the tubules in the nephron loop. When you look at the nephron and you see that loop go down and come back, clearly that structure, it must, there must be a reason why it's shaped like that, right? Because it's really exaggerated, and there is. The reason the loop is shaped like that is the ascending limb and the descending limb need to be able to interact with the same interstitium, right? So they share an interstitium. Yeah, this is our... Yes. Thank you, government, for utterly disrupting my class. It's, it's said it's going to go on for 30 seconds. I read, so... Just push your... Yeah, click on. I know. I did. Yeah, click on. Yeah, click on. Yeah, click on. Mine stopped making noise. Yeah. Okay. We're going to be 30 seconds behind the national... Right. All right, did everybody's work? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 30 seconds. Of, yeah. All right, so we have the two sides of the nephron loop that are close together. They share the same interstitium. So we get um, the, uh, an interaction between solute and water on the two sides. Okay. We start in kind of a fictitious way. Okay, this never really exists like this, but we have to start somewhere. Okay, so imagine that. In, we have a, a we're, we're booting up a kidney for the first time. <laughs> You're really late to break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're way <laughs> dead. <laughs> All right. Everything's 300, right? Because we have to start somewhere. Okay. So the filtrate is 300, and the inter this is the interstitium, right? The interstitium is 300. All right, now, this is moving, though. So we have um, filtrate that's moving through this fluid. All right, this uh, fluid over here, as it comes up, the solute's going to be pumped out, right? That's the thick ascending limb. Whole bunch of sodium moving. So as the sodium is pumped out, we see the osmolarity get, get smaller as we go up, OK? Now, if we look at the next phase, the water that's in here is going to be attracted to these hot, this high osmolarity region, right? The water is getting sucked out of the descending limb because of the solute from the ascending limb. Do you see that? So we've gone from 300 to 200 and 400, all right? Now the, the fluid's going to come around again. So this fluid here, these 400s that were concentrated, by the solute from this end, right? Solute moved, water moved. Now this is 400. The 400 is going to come around the bend, right? And head up. As it heads up, though, we're going to get sodium reabsorption again. So the 400 is going to be reduced by active solute transport. Now we're going to do the whole thing again, right? So now the water is from this end, from the descending limb, is attracted to the solute from the ascending limb, and that further concentrates it. So this keeps happening. It's called countercurrent multiplication. The, this is one current, right, moving the fluid towards the end of the nephron. The countercurrent is the solute that's moving backwards drawing more water that's moving forward. So when we go round and round with this, we get a very high osmolarity at the bottom of the loop and a very low osmolarity up here in the cortex, okay? Because of mostly all this solute that's been pumped out, right? It's the dark arrows that are doing the job. The dotted arrows are just water moving. Right? So water's following the salt. It just isn't following the salt from its end of the limb. It's following the salt from the other end of the limb. Do you see? That's how this multiplies. 
So what we get in the end is we get a very steep concentration gradient, right? So we have an osmolar gradient down here of 1500 compared to up here, 300 or 100. So this is the process of counter current multiplication. We exaggerate the medullary osmolarity um, <clears throat> by the, the interaction of the descending and ascending limb. 